السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا قال الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ثم ما بعد فان خير استقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي وهدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه 
كل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار بلغ الرسالة وعد الأمانة وكشف الغمة ونسح الأمة وجاء حتى في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين We start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family and his companions and all of his followers until the end of time Inshallah we're going to discuss a little bit about welcoming Ramadan what sort of approach should be when Ramadan approaches us <coughs> as you all know Ramadan is just a couple days away we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq so that we can get to Ramadan and we can worship as we're supposed to worship may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq there's lots of brothers and sisters who are not here they were here last year last year they had Ramadan last year but they could not make it this year some brothers were alive even five days, ten days, seven days ago. But they're not here. They did not get the tawfiq to get to the Ramadan. So far, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took us this far. We ask Allah to make us, help us to get to Ramadan. <clears throat> Nobody knows when you will pass away. Nobody knows when your time will come. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi mentioned in a hadith. He said, Amin three times. When he was stepping into the member, one of them was the Sahaba said, Rasulullah, why did you say Amin? And he said, Jibreel came to me and he made dua. That one, any of, any of anybody among you get a Ramadan and he could not get his sins forgiven, then woe to him. His nose being dust. And I said, Amin. So if we get Ramadan, it's upon us that we should, we should get, attain the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. <clears throat> the month of Ramadan is approaching. It's only two days away. If the Shaban is 29th, then Ramadan will start from Monday. Means the Sunday night. If the Shaban is 30, 30 days, then Ramadan will start from Monday night to Tuesday. So we don't have time. Right? So what did we prepare for Ramadan? Did we finish your shopping? Did we finish our... Um, groceries so those are the ways people prepare for Ramadan there are ways people prepare for Ramadan Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned in Hadith and welcoming Ramadan is not something new Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi used to congratulate Sahaba when the Ramadan is approaching was approaching he used to tell them the Ramadan is coming and then he used to tell them about virtues of Ramadan <clears throat> as there is mention in Hadith قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ شَحْرُ رَمَضَانِ شَحْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ افْتَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامَهُ يَفْتَحُ فِيهِ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَيُغْلَقُ فِيهِ أَبْوَابُ الْجَحِيمِ وَتُغْلَقُ وَتُغْلَقُ الشَّيَاطِينُ فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ مَنْ حُرِمَ خَيْرُهَا فَقَدْ حُرِمَ Prophet ﷺ said Ramadan has come to you So from this statement you can see Prophet ﷺ was telling sahabas that Ramadan has come to you what did you prepare for Ramadan? What's your approach towards Ramadan? So we are telling you today. We've been talking about Ramadan since last two khutbah in other masjid. <clears throat> because people should get, should get, they should pay attention to Ramadan. That Ramadan is coming and we should have something different approach. We should have some different approach than other months. So he sallallahu said, قَدْ جَاكُمْ شَحْرُ Ramadan. Ramadan is approaching. <clears throat> Ramadan has come to you, a blessed month. So he is disti make distinction. He is making distinction that Ramadan is not a regular month. It's a blessed month. Shahrul Mubarak. So a month is coming to you, which is a blessed month, which is not like regular months. A blessed month which Allah has obliged you to fast. In it, the gates of heaven are opened. In it, the gates of Jahannam are closed. And the devils are chained up. There is a night in it which is better than a thousand months, whoever is deprived of its goodness is indeed deprived. So he is telling us, whoever is deprived from the goodness of this month, he is deprived. Deprived. So nobody should deprive from this month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. 
the muslim should welcome the month of ramadan in a specific way but regarding the welcoming the ramadan there are people <clears throat> three kind of people three group groups of people how they welcome ramadan <clears throat> sheikh abdul razak al badr hafizahullah mentioned in a book he wrote a book qad jaa'akum shahru ramadan subhanallah our, our scholars they're amazing he wrote, and wrote down a book jaa'akum shahru ramadan ramadan is come to you welcoming ramadan subhanallah so he mentioned in his book there are three groups of people <clears throat> in terms of welcoming ramadan first group they are busy in grocery shopping supermarket we need this we need that we need rice we need bread we need the uh, meat we need, and all of us goes to supermarket we all have extra preparation to make for ramadan that's true we're going to eat we're going to eat more than the other months right ramadan we're supposed to stay away from food and we should strive hard but in this month we eat more subhanallah we don't eat whole day but the time we eat like 5 6 hours we eat more than the whole day so we all go to shopping that's true we need shopping that's understandable but there are some people who goes to shopping that's their main goal <clears throat> piling up foods drinks meats and that's their main goal that's what they do this is for them this is the welcoming ramadan they, they look at the um, you know the sale paper which supermarket gives more sale which store has more sale which grocery has more sale and they just do that that's their concern that's the way they prepare for ramadan that's one group another group of people those who think before ramadan come they are worried how do we spend our night subhanallah i'm sure pretty sure if you guys look around you you will see people what do we do at night times do we prepare a carrom board so you can play whole night or do we prepare a ludo we can play whole night or should we prepare the card game so we can play card whole night am i sound unfamiliar there are people subhanallah in our families in your friend circles there are people who choose the series what i'm going to watch in this month i'm going to finish this 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 and that series in this month in netflix because i have lots of time in the night time in ramadan i have lots of time in ramadan so i can busy myself with watching movies and series and games and subhanallah these are second group of people so these are the two group the third group are the blessed one those who prepare for ramadan spiritually what do you do when ramadan comes what extra worship i can do how long i can recite quran more than i than my regular schedule can i memorize a couple more surahs than last year can i recite extra one hour two hour a day can i contemplate on meaning of one or two surahs they think about ramadan can i do can i fix my schedule so that i can do itikaf in this month can i talk to my manager and make my schedule in such a way so i can present in iftar and suhoor and uh, tarawih so these people are worried about how can we welcome how can we welcome ramadan spiritually these are the blessed one may allah subhanahu wa taala <coughs> help them may allah subhanahu wa taala give them tawfiq may allah subhanahu wa taala make us among that group people <coughs> There is another hadith from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned: "إذا كان أول ليلة من شهر رمضان صفدت شياطين ومرضت المرضة الجن وغلقت أبواب النار فلم يفت فلم يفتح منها باب ثم ثم فتحت أبواب الجن أبواب الجنان فلم يغلق منها باب." When he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, when the first night of Ramadan comes, the devils and rebellious jinns are chained up. <coughs> So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chained up devils and rebellious jinns. Why? So that they cannot disturb us. Allah is giving us a way, helping us so that we can worship better. But we are, subhanallah, we are worse than jinns and shayateen. We don't need jinn and shayateen. We ourselves are worse. Whether we go in the wrong direction, we take people with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to rectify ourselves in this Ramadan. <clears throat> and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, and the gates of the hellfire are closed and none of its gates are opened. The gates of the Jannah are open and none of its are closed. 
the whole month and he said a caller cries out and a caller cries out wa yunadi yunadi munadi ya baghi al khair aqbil wa 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 ya baghi al sharr aqsir a caller cries out and he calls he says oh seeker of good come forth allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoint someone to call people towards the goodness we should all be aware that ramadan is something important but also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is appointing someone to call please come to goodness come to goodness on the same hand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is someone who calls people or seek of evil stop if you want to go do something evil there is someone cries out shout out and said oh seek of evil stop so allah is helping us in so many in so many ways so can we we can do more worship and we can stay away from haram and evil things may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq <coughs> Month of Ramadan is an opportunity for those who want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the best time we can repent. We all have sins. Is there anyone who, who can say, I don't have any sins? No. Prophet Muhammad mentioned, Kullu bani adam khattaw. Khayru khattawina tawwabun. Every single son of Adam is sinful. But among them, they're the best, those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is our chance to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are conditions of repentance. People, everybody knows about it. If you are repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should be aware that this is a sin. You should know that this is a sin. You should be guilty of this sin. And you should make promise that I'm not going to do this sin again. <clears throat> and the fourth condition, if it involves sinning with someone else you should get forgiveness from that person so this is a good time this is the best time we should get forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> if you have any disputes with your brothers please get forgiveness from him if you have any sin you know of or you don't know of ask forgiveness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can start this month with a fresh clean slate and you can end this month with a full of reward and hasanat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees people from the hellfire in this month. <coughs> a lot of every night, and it happens every night. Prophet Muhammad as mentioned, and people will be freed from Jahannam. And that happens every single night until the Ramadan finishes. So you should get the chance of these blessings and barakah. <coughs> and this month is a blessed month. Prophet Muhammad mentioned about this month is a Shahru Mubarak. This month is a blessed month. In this month, if you do one good deeds, it multiplies 70 to 700 times and many more. And in this month, there is a night, Laylatul Qadr, which is better than. Thousand months. Allah SWT did not mean say it, or Prophet did not say it equals to thousand months. He said it's better than thousand months. So how many? How how better it is? No one knows. It could be thousand, ten thousand, one million months. Allahu alam. But it's better than thousand months. So you should not get distracted with the worldly affairs and stay away from these blessings. May Allah SWT give us understanding. <coughs> And we should rejoice with the arrival of this month. We should be happy with the arrival of this month. You know, when in our home, a guest comes, an esteemed guest comes. We prepare food. We prepare sleeping arrangement for him. Because this is an honorable guest. So what better, what honor, what better honorable guest can be than other than Ramadan? Ramadan comes, it, it, Allah SWT gives us chance so that we can get forgiven. We can get our sins forgiven. We can increase our good deeds. We can str get strengthened with taqwa and piety. So what better guest we can have better than this month, month of Ramadan. So we should be happy. We should rejoice that the month of Ramadan is approaching. And this is something amazing. If someone gets uh, worship in this month 
and he can get forgiven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what better you can ex expect? So as we prepare for our guest, we should prepare better for this month. Ramadan is our esteemed guest. <coughs> <coughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Inshallah, the second part of khutbah, we'll discuss a little bit more. We have sh time short. Inshallah, we'll continue the second part. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد and this month it has lots of benefit lots of blessings immense benefits virtues a lot Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the hadith, Man saama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban, gufira lahu ma taqaddawa min zambi. Whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan, truthfully, out of sincere faith, and hoping to attain Allah's reward, all of his past sins will be forgiven. But there is conditions. In a truthful manner. And it has to be for the sincerity. It has to be for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala only. And has to attain the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, so many people you will see, they fast, they're not happy when Ramadan comes. Oh man, I have to keep fasting, and I don't like fasting. Now if I don't fast, the brothers in the masjid, they will say, you're not fasting? So I have to fast, even if I don't like it. There are people like that. So even if they keep fasting whole month, they're not going to attain the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the condition involved. To attain the reward, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere faith sincerity it has to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're fasting it has to be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to please brothers and sisters my co-worker my fellow friends so that they cannot say oh you're not fasting man you're not fasting you're a Muslim just to avoid those things some people fast may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq so that we can fast with sincere faith and we can attain the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> the first thing person receives a great reward and plentiful recompense from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reward of fasting person is something different. Every single worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, grant reward, reward through the angels. But Ramadan, Siyam is something, he do it by with his own hand. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mentioned in a hadith, uh, in a hadith of Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Siyam is for me and I am the one who gives reward. So this is some distinct from every single other worship. Ramadan is amazing. It's, it's completely different. Siyam is something completely different. Allah SWT himself give reward. And he says, Siyam uli wana ajzibihi. Ramadan is for, Siyam is for me and I am the one who gives rewards. So Allah is the one who gives reward. Subhanallah. <coughs> There is another hadith Prophet mentioned. I'm gonna um, end, inshallah, because we have sh sh time uh, shortage. Prophet Muhammad mentioned the hadith. The first thing person has two moments of joy that the, he, he rejoices in. He he be happy in these two moments. What are the two moments? When he breaks his fast, he rejoices, and when he meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he rejoices. When he break his fast, he completed the day with fasting. And he is now eligible for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he rejoices. And after a whole day of fasting, he can eat now. He can drink now. So he's happy. And the second happiness, he rejoices. And he becomes happy when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because now he's going to get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad mentioned there is two moments. A Saim can have the happy moment so that they rejoice in. <coughs> and importantly, in the month of Ramadan, we attain piety, taqwa. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayuhal lazeen amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala lazeen min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you, like it was prescribed for those who became before you, so that may, you may attain piety, taqwa. So Ramadan is the chance we can strengthen our taqwa. Everybody's taqwa becomes, goes up and down. You involve in sin, your taqwa goes down. We involve in good things, halal things, your taqwa goes up. So this is the chance, this is the month 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us chance so we can strengthen our taqwa and we can renew our taqwa until the next year, next Ramadan comes. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people who can attain the taqwa. <coughs> and, and lastly, inshallah, I'm going to end this khutbah. This month is special for Quran. Quran was revealed in this month, the month of Ramadan. So we should pay more attention to Quran. There are narrations from our previous scholars. Some of them, when Ramadan comes, they stop everything. They only contemplate the Quran. Some of them finish Quran once a day. Some of them finish Quran once in every two days. Some of them finish Quran once in a week. Some of them finish Quran once in ten days. So at least we should try to finish Quran, contemplate over it for once in a month at least, throughout the month, right? But subhanAllah, there are brothers who don't even open the Quran. Some of them, when they open their mushaf, they take their mushaf out from all the way on the top shelf and they, you know, blow on it because the dust on it from last 11 months. And they take out the dust and they put it on the table, but they don't finish Quran. They don't recite Quran. We don't want to be like that. Please pay attention to Quran. Focus more on Quran. Contemplate on Quran so that we can, we can get Quran on our side on the Day of Judgment so that Quran can intercede for us. And Quran's intercession is amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept Quran's intercession. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us so that we can get to Ramadan so, and we can attain taqwa. We can use the most of Ramadan. We can get the benefit from Ramadan. We can get forgiven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this, we can finish Ramadan in a state of health and iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. رب الحمهما كما ربيان صغيرة رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي عمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدنا علما رب زدنا علما اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وعدل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداء الدين وحمي حوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك وعبادك الموحدين اللهم أن تنصر الإسلام وأحله في كل مكان اللهم أن تنصر الإسلام وأحله في كل مكان عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينحان الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون على ذكر الله الأكبر واقم الصلاة